Welcome back to another week in the Bevy ecosystem. This is This Week in Bevy. This week we've got animation graphs, Bevy cheap book updates, and googly eyes. One of the major PRs this week addressed RFC 51 animation composition. That PR implemented animation graph, allowing for multiple animations to be blended together. Note that if you're looking for the PR to reflect the RFC, the implementation strategy is different than the one outlined in the RFC because two-phase animation has now landed. This is the animation graph example. On the bottom left, you can see a graph, and on you know the center, you can see the fox running. In this case, it's got a run animation, a walking animation, which is slightly less intense, and an idle animation where it's kind of moving its head back and forth. Now, if all of these are at zero, it's not moving at all. If we bring idle up to one, we blend walk and idle together. I can now start to bring up run and it will start moving. So the fox is now doing something kind of halfway between idling and running where its head is still moving, which is not present in the run animation, but it's also not really just standing still, which is present in the idle animation. And you can do any kind of combination of these. So now we've got this really slow <laughs> percentage run with a lot of idling, or we can bring idle all the way down, get it back to running and kind of mix a little bit of walking in there. So that's the animation graph example showcasing those features. This file is about 500 lines of code. Not all of it is related to the animation blending itself. Some of it is the UI, but we won't go over the rest of that in this video. Next up, the Bevy cheat book got a major update. The Bevy cheat book is a reference style book for Bevy concepts. And in my opinion, it is a major piece of the ecosystem. If you go to the intro your code section, this will give you a bunch of links to a bunch of the sections that have been updated to Bevy 0.13, including, for example, schedules. Updating resources like this is a major amount of work, and I know that I used this when I was first learning Bevy, and it was super useful, so I'm happy to see it continue to be updated. Also this week, the Bevy Dev Tools crate was created, which marks some progress in the editor efforts. What it will become in the future is somewhat to be determined, but the original issue makes it seem like easily turning dev tools on and off is a priority. And as always for the maintainers out there, Alice always does a wonderful Bevy merge train, or maybe not always, but quite often on Mondays, going through the PRs that are on deck and giving an overview on a pretty maintainer level of what's going on, whether they're merging, if they have conflicts and so on. Next up, we've got some images from the Artifact project. This is an experiment to build tools for a voxel game, which will be highly customizable and rich in features. The author has a whole bunch of ideas that they haven't seen anywhere yet, and they're curious if it works out. The goal, as with many games, is to make a game that is a lot of fun and gives unique experiences, but at the same time makes it possible to be extended by you. And in these images, you can see some of the progress they've made in terms of editing and being able to place voxels in the environment. Our next showcase is for algorithmically generated floors. This is part of a larger project, so this is a piece of that project being showcased. The floors start out as 2D polygons, which are then triangulated using ear cut and 3D geometry generated in a task. The different floor surface types are determined by schematics, which are defined in JSON, which also has a schema mentioned later in the thread. If you look closely, and in this case, you don't have to, because I'll just zoom in for you, you can see these black outlines, which are a custom shader. The goal here is to recreate the look and feel of isometric tile games from the early 2000s, except in this case, the tiles are actually 3D models and there's actually perspective. In the Discord thread for this one, there's some great commentary from Why Bevy to an entire game soundtrack to a link directly to the floor mesh generation code. So if you're interested in any of that, go check out the Discord thread. Next up, we've got some editor shenanigans. This is doodad placement, including the placement of trees using Bevy Editor PLS for please. So you can see the landscape being thrown in here and you can see them placing trees as well. If we zoom in on a tree, you can grab it and drag it around. And I believe there's also some programmatic additions here. And next up, we've got Snake. And Snake is a pretty classic game to build when learning a new game engine. So I'm always hyped to see new people getting into Bevy. Of course, for this one, the source code is open and on GitHub. So feel free to check it out. But we are gonna move on to Space Shooter. The game developer for this one has been learning Rust for about a week and built this retro-like game as a result of that work. They're planning to both continue the work on it and open source it at some point in the future. And of course, as I go to make the video, Space Race is now open sourced, so you can go check it out on GitHub. They've added a couple randomly spawning asteroids as well as improved rocket and asteroid animations. And of course, it wouldn't be a week in Bevy without some game jam submissions. This is a game jam submission from somebody who spent about a week building out these levels. You can see a little mini map in the top right, and I believe that these levels are being rendered from that mini map, although it was not confirmed. 
They do look pretty good though, especially for being, as far as I can tell, derived from that minimap. And of course, where would we be without some older game recreations? Tiny Death Star is a pixel art Death Star, the Star Wars kind, simulator slash manager. There isn't a lot more in the showcase other than this nice visual, which looks amazing, honestly. So hopefully we'll get some gameplay in the future. And of course, our next showcase is a Descent clone, which is audio-based this week. So enjoy the sounds of lasers. Rogue Push is a game jam game made for the seven-day roguelike challenge that you can go play on itch.io right now. It's somewhat turn-based, so you get to choose which tile you want to go to next, and it tells you what you're able to do up in the top left. So I'm getting into the next room here. Oh, it looks like there's some enemies. <laughs> I think if they touch me, I am going to end the game. Run away. Let's run away. Okay. Run, 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 run. Oh, I can melee. So you can make it into different rooms. The lighting looks fantastic. We did get a showcase of this last week. And when you melee the monsters, they turn into little tombstones, which is hilarious. I'm not sure if the little floor tiles mean anything. And I'm somewhat confused about the turn ordering. But overall, this was a one week game. And for that, it is fantastic. I love the visuals. I love the lighting. There's a lot to like about this entry. The source code for this one is available on GitHub. And here you can see Leafwing Input Manager, Bevy Asset Loader, which both feel like fundamental crates to me at this point, as well as an assortment of other third party crates. Now, Jarl is a fantasy colony builder with some amazing 2D lighting systems, which are actually also available to use separately as a Bevy plugin, if you're willing to use a Git dependency. This demo shows a system which can detect various kinds of indoor spaces, such as rooms, which are yellow, and caves, which are red. Definitely check out their YouTube for devlogs, and they've also got a Discord for this game, where they post regular updates. I just absolutely love the look of these little floating icons on the left as well, even though that's not what they're showcasing in this video. Well-known game asset creator Kenny released some googly eyes, which immediately got used to create an example desk toy widget. This example got upgraded then into this desk toy example inside of the Bevy repo itself. The demo shows off some interesting usage of window transparency, and you can take this and drag it around and watch the eyes Google around, I don't know, Google bounce. I don't know. <laughs> You can see that because I have external application forcing the layout of these applications that there's an edge here, but normally this would be able to run over the top of any of your other windows and you would be able to just drag this around the desktop. Up next, we've got an experimental prototype for some day-to-day -day ease of use macros for armatures. Armatures, also known as bones, can be used for many different kinds of entities, not just things that are people shaped. For example, you could use them to drive this turret. So the previous image was inside of Blender, and this image is inside of Bevy, using what looks like Bevy Inspector eGUI to show off the armatures. They aren't quite sure if they're going to release the code for this just yet, so as of today, it's just a showcase. But if you're interested in that, go check out the Discord thread and let them know so that they do release it. This next one I have a little bit of a soft spot for because I really love procedural generation, and Tiny Glade is extremely heavy on procedural generation which is well known to be very resource intensive. This level of resource intensive usage at the time of loading can cause stutters as the game loads and generates. This approach uses a second bevy app to basically make the loading screen a separate process, isolated from the resource intensive usage, resulting in a smooth loading indicator. This approach is fairly unique to Tiny Glade, as Tiny Glade has been around since bevy 0.6 or something like that, and they have rendering professionals working on it who wanted things done in specific ways. Ice Sentry, somebody who is really knowledgeable about Bevy, states that Tiny Glade uses a custom renderer and asset system. The Bevy built-in asset system does have async loading of assets, and it is possible to implement a loading screen without using this two-app technique. With that said, it still has some pitfalls, and this solution could still make sense even in a game that uses the Bevy asset system. There's a lot of great discussion about different rendering APIs, how to get started in rendering, as well as discussion of this technique in particular and why it exists like it does in the Discord thread. So go check that out. Next up, we've got even more procedural generation for dungeon generation this time. These dungeons are spawned random sized, random positioned rectangles, and then connecting them using corridors by a minimum spanning tree. This isn't using any fancy algorithms like wave function collapse or anything like that, but the implementation may get a rewrite anyway, because the author faced some issues with how the walls were built up. Next up, we've got another ant colony simulation. We've had one ant simulation before, but this is definitely not the same one. 
as you can see the answer spread around the screen definitely differently this is a top-down view the other one we saw last week was a kind of a side-on view vertical or horizontal slice the source for this one is available on github under the polyform strict license which is not a license that i'm personally familiar with it's also as may be obvious available on itch.io if you would like to play it project home got furniture assembly this week and it is easier than ikea just click to build and stop wasting six hours building that Ikea bookshelf. Next up, we've got more work on the Deltarune fan game. New work here includes the pause menu and an animation system that can load animations from .ron files. The animation got moved into a repository on Codeberg called Bevy Sprite Anim, and it includes an example of loading the ron files. So if you're looking to take something like this and use it into your own game, definitely go check out the GitHub repo and see how to use it. This game looks absolutely fantastic. I'm a huge fan of this pause menu and the art style in general. We've got more updates to another voxel experiment. We've seen this game before, but we haven't quite seen it like this. You can click and drag to build voxels now in batches, which is a skill that I wish I had in Minecraft. And the source for Boris, which is the game's name, is available under MIT on GitHub. As we get into the next game, I would just like to say that I absolutely love seeing people ship stuff. This is a game called Gomoku, which is kind of like Go, but there are some capture rules. I am not a huge Go person, so I don't quite know how to play, which is a problem, as you can see. I don't really understand the capture rules. I do understand that you need to get five in a row, which I can get easily blocked by the AI they've programmed, <laughs> but we'll see how it goes. And as soon as I say that, I've lost. <laughs> This is again available on itch.io and uh, the AI is, you know, if you don't know what you're doing, hard to beat. And finally for our showcases, we've got a baked custom normal map from Blender combined with a small standard material extension shader, which results in this painterly tree scene. If you like this result, check out some of the inspiration for your own work as well. As we move into crate releases, we're going to start with Chard Path 0.1.1. Chard Path is a component-based plugin for Bevy used for recording the homotopy type of a moving object around a specified set of points in 2D. Now that's very confusing mathematical jargon, so you can imagine this somewhat as being either moving clockwise or counterclockwise around a set of predetermined points, at which point you can actually draw those paths. It may not have been obvious while we were watching it, but you can serialize these paths into the words in the bottom right, which represent the paths that have been taken. Similar paths will result in similar words. And this enables some really interesting use cases, especially around tracking player movement in platformers. The crate initially was built with platformers and Metrovanias specifically in mind, but is well suited to a number of game development scenarios, such as beta testing or game logic. I think the beta testing example is self-explanatory in that knowing where players are going when they're testing your game is super useful. But using this for game mechanics also allows you to check whether a player's character went above or below a certain platform and triggered different events later in the game based on those interactions. Last week, we saw Bevy Collider Gen get released. And for that work, this crate came out of it. This is an underlying crate that can roughly calculate the edges in a transparent image. I don't know that I'll find a use for this in my own work, but it is very interesting from the perspective, especially of building out small dev tools or level editors. If you can draw a JPEG or something in Procreate or something like that, and then take that, throw it through edges and get bounding boxes or collision detection, then you've got a nice little tool on your hands. Bevy RTS camera is what it says on the Tim. It's an RTS camera. It's got all the essentials, including being able to pan, zoom, rotate, smoothing movement, automatically following ground or terrain, and of course you can customize it. Bevy Replicon saw its 0.24 release. Bevy Replicon is a high level networking crate for the Bevy game engine. This release brings the ability to write your own integration with the messaging library of your choice. Previously, Renet was the first party supported networking implementation. It will remain first party as a separate crate called Bevy Replicon Renet. And that is not actually even the only Bevy Replicon release we've had this week. Bevy Replicon Snap is a snapshot interpolation plugin for Bevy Replicon. It also enables client-side prediction. Now, this library in particular is very rough proof of concept and not meant to be used in production games. That is Bevy Replicon Snap specifically, not Bevy Replicon. Bevy Yet's got its first release. 
Bevy Yetz is a plugin to aid in the implementation of rule-based AI. As is the case with many new crates, the author wasn't quite satisfied with how existing crates worked, especially related to focus on state switching. Yetz itself focuses more on the data that accompanies these states. Moving on to Bevy Incandescent. 0.1.0, the first release. Last week, we saw this 2D lighting showcase. This week, we get the actual Bevy plugin. Currently, the plugin only supports point lights and ambient light, but as you can see here, there's a whole bunch of future work. This is another one that's work in progress, so maybe use it in your experiments, but maybe not in your production games. Bevy Stat Query got its 0.0.2 version. Bevy Stat Query is self-described as an over-designed experimental RPG stat system. And it looks a bit like this. Now, I'm not sure how over-designed it is, but it's always nice to see new approaches. In particular, one part of the API worth mentioning is that the querier or the queries are harder to write. So there's a macro to help you out. Moonshine Util got a new release, which is sort of a grab bag of collection of utilities for the Bevy game engine. Expect performs additional checking to make sure a component is associated with all instances of the query component. This means the system can enforce that all components with A also have B. In particular, they show an example here where if you query for components that have A and B, you may get no data if there is a component with an A, but not a B. I tend to like writing systems like this, and I think I would write an additional second debugging system if I needed to. But if you're more of a unwrap kind of Rust writer, maybe expecting here is what you want. Fail early, fail often after all. Hierarchy query enables entity traversal and the querying of those relationships. This reminds me of the Airy crate, which does a similar kind of thing, but both use different APIs. And finally, if you find yourself writing a lot of tests and needing to run systems and loops, run system loop is a new trait that is similar to run system once. That's it for crate releases. Let's get into dev logs. This is this person's first six months with Rust and Bevy. This person decided to jump on the Rust train for the first time and dig into Bevy for the last six months. This devlog shows off a number of different parts of their journey, including shaders, terrain, and 3D animation. Small Town Life is a really cute game. I love this aesthetic. It's a city community builder, and this update covers improvements to the artificial intelligence system as well as many other improvements. Hack RPG is an arena roguelike. This devlog talks about plans for the game, and showcases some of the gameplay where you are a hacker fighting bugs. And of course, we had a whole bunch of pull requests merged this week. I covered a couple of them in the intro. A couple of them are docs related, showcasing that emissive colors and bloom are often confused as topics. There's also some day-to-day -day utility PRs, such as deprecating Sprite Sheet Bundle and Atlas Image Bundle. As of Bevy 0.13 and the Texture Atlas changes, Sprite Sheet Bundle is equivalent to Texture Atlas in a Sprite Bundle, and an Atlas Image Bundle is equivalent to Texture Atlas plus an Image Bundle. So having more names for more things isn't particularly useful or necessary. We've also got the removal of background color as the color tint for a UI image, which is absolutely fantastic. If you didn't know, previously you could tint a UI image by adding a background color, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you want the background color and the tint to be the same thing. So now you can have a solid color background and an image and tint is now UI image color. If you're looking to contribute, there are a bunch of pull requests that were opened this week. You can of course get some review in, help people out, run things if there are new examples that need to be run and report your experience with them. And if you're looking for something a little bit deeper, maybe you can build your own replication case or write some docs yourself by checking out the issues that were opened this week. That's it for this week in Bevy. I will see you next week. Have a great week.